Welcome to the Professor Slots Podcast. You know how you put a lot of time and energy into your slots play for not nearly enough wins? Yeah, I get it. I'm here to help you change that. If you're trying to accelerate your slots momentum, become more profitable, and win more than ever before, today's episode will help you move forward with confidence. And now to help you with over a decade of experience working with slots enthusiasts just like you, here's Dr. John Friedel, also known as Professor Slots. Hello, slots enthusiasts. It's great to hang out with you again for another Professor Slots podcast episode I do every few days to help you improve your slots performance, leave with your winnings, and ultimately change your life for the better. And hopefully I'm going to change your life a little bit today so you can visit your casino and play slots smarter. And sometimes the best way we can do that to change slots enthusiasts' lives for the better is when they enter a business relationship with us. They become a client. They buy our online course. They start getting coaching from us, whatever the case may be, because you have ways to take advantage of your casino, which allows you to impact how much you win and then leave with your winnings. I'm your host, Dr. John Friedel, but please call me John. I help slots enthusiasts improve their gambling performance with next-level tactics and strategies. Want to accelerate your slots journey, be more profitable, and understand casinos better to take advantage of them? I have over a decade of experience working with slots enthusiasts just like you, so you're in the right place. In case you missed it, on my last episode, I went over why do casinos move your winning slot machine, the Guam Slots Industry, and provided a Q&A session from one of my past live streams. I hope you enjoyed listening to my last episode as much as I enjoyed making it for you. Today's episode number 183 includes a review of the slots industry in Hawaii later in the episode followed by a Q&A session from a prior live stream. But I'll begin for you today with the importance of changing your slot strategy when significantly increasing or lowering your bankroll size. Strategies for $300 bankrolls aren't the same strategies for succeeding at $3,000 bankrolls. Make sure you know the changes necessary for significantly raising or lowering your bankroll. Change is a constant. Some things, like how much we take to the casino, for instance, can change over time. Whether increasing or decreasing your bankroll by a lot, for many good reasons, doing so means a significant change to your gambling style. But if we don't adapt to that new bankroll, a world of hurt lurks around the corner. Let's talk about making a bankroll adjustment and what you need to be aware of for it to go well and also be a great and positive experience. Transitioning to a different size bankroll means changing your winning slot strategies. Several circumstances can drive wanting to make such a change. For example, becoming bored with a current gambling style because everything that can be done to improve slots performance has already been done. So you're ready for the next challenge. Or, personal finances have significantly increased in terms of disposable income, so the gambling style chosen originally no longer matches a player's lifestyle as well as it once did. Whatever reason exists for wanting to make a gambling style change, including simply gaining a better understanding of how casinos and and the gaming industry works, the critical element for making such a change involves improved money management skills. Changing styles often significantly changes the relative size of the bankroll needed, whether increased or decreased. Do you understand? Changing bankroll sizes means changing gambling styles. But the reverse is also true. Changing gambling styles also means changing bankroll sizes. For example, a few years ago, my slots gambling experiences involved large bankrolls, yet changes in economic conditions and ownership of the local casino led to gambling with a smaller bankroll. I also made this decision for another reason, which was to understand the entertainment style of gambling for my audience. Using different size bankrolls generally results in learning to handle more or perform better financial record keeping than was previously done. Not keeping good gambling records is common when spending a few hundred dollars during a single casino visit. But that is no longer a luxury you can afford when jumping to $1,000 or $3,000 bankrolls. For example, you may hire an accountant to handle a significant increase in hand-paid jackpots and their associated income tax forms. Or a player may purchase and use spreadsheet software to effectively manage an increase in gambling records and notes driven by the change in gambling style rather than just the change in bankroll size. Have you ever gotten a hand-paid jackpot? A W-2G tax form? If so, imagine getting a stack of them, where each one must be individually entered into your income tax preparation software. Casino name, complete address, telephone number, and tax ID. For instance, for 50 W-2Gs, or 100, or 250. 
I entered 40 to 50 W2Gs for two years running, and it was a lot of work come tax season. Changing bankroll sizes is a great deal of fun. I've enjoyed going from a $500 bankroll for six months to a $3,000 bankroll for a couple of years, then back down to a $300 bankroll for my trip reviews to new-to-me casinos. Yet, it can be a bit of a challenge to make such a change. However, it may not be fun for everyone in and of itself, but such a change certainly has the potential financial windfall that offers compensation. This compensation can apply to increasing or decreasing the bankroll size. If a player changes their gambling style, they need to educate themselves about the new form and then go ahead and do it. This change includes switching styles to support a reduced bankroll. Have patience when learning a new style, as retraining yourself and learning the appropriate habits may take a while to adopt. But as usual, have fun and enjoy. My best advice isn't about changing a particular gambling style from one highly individualized approach to another with a higher bankroll. Instead, it's the unexpected pitfalls of making significant changes to your gambling style. We're all on a slots journey, hiking through jungles, over mountain passes, and navigating ocean journeys. If you watch where you place your feet, you should be fine, I hope. For instance, are you ready to go up to the next tax bracket? Or going up to the next tax bracket after that? What is the highest income bracket anyway? How do you determine the fair market value for an influx of comps received from the casino to not get in trouble with the IRS when submitting those comps as taxable income? And how do you keep track of all that? Hint, see my online course at courses.professorslots.com, some of which are entirely free. Players may be surprised to know that understanding city taxes is vital to continued financial health when switching gambling styles, especially those that significantly increase the number of taxable jackpots won. I was shocked when I found out. I recommend you see if you pay local or city income taxes. If so, what's the relative difference between the local income tax rate and the local income tax for your casino where you've won hand-paid jackpots? State and federal taxes may allow gambling deductions if you've kept sufficiently good records, but some states have income taxes that can be surprising. For instance, the state of Oklahoma has placed a cap on gambling deductions for non-residents. It was $17,000, but I haven't checked lately to see if it's changed. Income tax burdens aren't pleasant, but unexpected income tax burdens are much worse. I am not an income tax professional, so please check with one. Consulting with your accountant or income tax professional and sound financial record keeping can result in either an annual tax refund or no significant tax payment from both state and federal income tax returns. This non-problem is what some gamblers refer to as a wash. It's due to having no significant annual tax payment or tax refund for gambling. If a player has local or city taxes, they may find themselves effectively blocked from gambling at a relatively high level. Many hand-paid jackpots can result in an increased tax burden. And if you're not aware of the difficulty, players can get in severe financial hardship if they proceed to gamble heavily anyway. I did. Why? Because it is more than likely the local income tax will not accept any tax deductions related to gaming. This caution is for players required to submit an annual tax revenue form to the local or city government. It includes the often relatively massive gambling deductions routinely accepted with state and federal income tax returns. Perhaps you don't entirely understand this potential local tax issue. Increasing your bankroll can result in hand pays, many hand pays, and W2G jackpots. Routinely handling W2G jackpots becomes a necessity with higher bankrolls. Once again, this time with feeling, if you have local income taxes, be sure to consult with your local income tax preparer, especially if dramatically enhancing your slot machine gambling performance. By, you know, watching my content and educating yourself about slots to improve your gambling performance. We're all on a slots journey. Let's say you always took a $300 bankroll to the casino for slots and now find yourself able to comfortably take $1,000. Again, why can be for all sorts of reasons. For me, it happened because I was suddenly getting overtime pay for the first time in my life. Honestly, I never thought I'd get that as a salaried engineer. It was only straight time, but working 60 to 65 hours a week was a regular thing for me. So I spent $500 every couple of months at the casino. I would take $500, spend half of it, and then leave with $250. But then I had my epiphany about winning at slots, if I can use that word, when it was 10 years in the making. And suddenly I was bringing a $2,500 to $3,000 bankroll to the casino three or four times a week. 
I enjoyed earning 50 or so hand pays while also getting seven star status in six weeks with the Caesars Rewards program. But it was a big change. If you instead jump from a $300 bankroll to a $1,000 bankroll, it's different from jumping from a $500 bankroll out on the main casino floor to making $20 to $30 bets in high limits with a $3,000 bankroll. Most times, $1,000 is not enough for the high limit room unless you're using my five spin method. The difference between $300 and $1,000 bankrolls means only a small change to gambling styles. If you use a Winner's Bank 200 or Gamble Box lockable wallet, that's pretty much over. They are too small. That means you may lose your previous preserving gains method, and you'll have to come up with another one. Here's mine. I use my deposit-only front pocket. One front pocket and a pair of men's jeans can hold up to $20,000 in $100 bills. Increasing bankrolls may mean disciplining yourself to switch to that preserving gains technique. The difference between a $300 or $1,000 bankroll and a $3,000 bankroll is significant. Yes, you can use that size bankroll out on the casino floor, barely, making $8 or $10 maximum bets on a penny machine, but your high limit room becomes an option with a $3,000 bankroll. Having a $3,000 bankroll gives you a lot of options at a casino, so it would be best if you had a plan. As I tell my university students on career day, I don't care what your plan is, I care that you have a plan. What about bankrolls over $3,000? Playing slots with $3,000 to about $5,000 or even $10,000 bankrolls are pretty much the same, but things start to get sticky again when you get to over $10,000 bankrolls. Please don't play slots at your casino's single $100 denomination machine or its single $500 denomination machine. You want a selection of slot machines to play, whatever the denomination, not one or two. I've seen that mistake too often, even done it myself early on. How much bankroll do you need to play a $100 denomination machine? Well, what size bets do you make with your normal bankroll? Let's say you have a $300 bankroll and make 90 cent bets on penny machines. A $100 bet is 111 times 90 cents. And 111 times your $300 bankroll means you'll need $33,333 for a $100 denomination machine. Unless it's a two credit machine, so then you'll need twice that just to have about the same chance of winning as you have with your 90 cent bets with your $300 bankroll. So do you win more than $300 with your $300 bankroll? Sometimes? And so you could sometimes win more than $33,000 with your $33,000 bankroll on a one credit $100 machine. Or maybe you make $100 over your $300 bankroll. That'll be the same as winning $11,000 over your $33,000 bankroll. And how often do you spend your $300 bankroll and get back $200? With a $33,000 bankroll, that'll be like taking home only $22,000 of it. If you plan on using a bankroll in the tens of thousands, check with your casino about how you get it into the machine. Casinos can load the machine for you, which is quick and doesn't involve filling the cash box with hundreds. Strategies for $300 bankrolls aren't the same strategies for succeeding with $3,000 bankrolls. Make sure you know what $3,000 players do that you don't. Improve your slots performance in 30 days or less with my 30 days to play slots smarter and win. You also get three free valuable bonuses, including one month free to my Slots IQ membership group, where you get community support and accountability. Visit professorslots.com slash 30 days to learn more about the free bonuses, course content, and testimonials from participants. In the next segment of the show, I provide a brief overview of the current state of gambling in a U.S. state, territory, or the federal district, emphasizing the gaming industry for slots enthusiasts. Let's go over Hawaii's gaming industry for playing slots. Hawaii slot machine casino gambling does not exist. For business reasons related to Hawaii's tourism industry, the Hawaiian Islands are one of the most uncompromising states prohibiting gambling. The minimum legal gambling age in Hawaii does not depend upon the gambling activity. For land-based casinos, poker rooms, bingo, the lottery, and paramutual wagering, it is not available. Hawaii prohibits all forms of gambling, including slot machines, table games, lotteries, horse and dog racing, sports betting, and even bingo. However, Hawaii allows social gaming with restrictions. Craps may eventually fall under Hawaii's legal definition of social gaming. Hawaii has not embraced gaming because for the Hawaiian Islands, there's not enough profit in it. Relative to their existing tourism industry, a gaming industry would result in a fraction of the profit. Hawaii has established potential annual revenue from gaming between $20 million and $40 million. 
However, Hawaii's annual tourism revenue is already at $1 billion. Simply put, Hawaii would suffer a significant loss if it used its valuable land for a casino instead of what they're currently using it for, tourism. Gambling in Hawaii is a misdemeanor offense under most circumstances. It can become a felony if an individual receives more than $1,000 per day in lottery bet income or five bookmarking wagers per day with a value over $500. Next up is a usually short statement about slot machine private ownership, which I have included in case you live in this U.S. state and are considering owning a slot machine. Here it is. Hawaii prohibits private ownership of slot machines. Hawaii does not have a gaming control commission. Horse racing was once popular on the islands, enjoyed by the royal family and the financial elite in the 1800s and early 1900s. The industry nearly died out prior to 1920, but made a strong, if short-lived, comeback during World War II. In this section, I'll discuss Hawaii gambling establishments. There are no land-based casinos in Hawaii. Visiting cruise ships offer Vegas-style gambling when traveling in international waters, but cannot when located in nearby Hawaiian waters. There are no commercial casinos on the Hawaiian Islands. Hawaii has no federally recognized American Indian tribes. Any proposed federal recognition of Native Hawaiians is politically controversial. Some Hawaiian lawmakers believe recognition might interfere with Hawaii's claims of independence as a constitutional monarchy through international law. As an alternative to enjoying Hawaii slot machine casino gambling, consider exploring casino options in a nearby state or territory. Bordering Hawaii is, to the southwest, American Samoa. To the west, northern Mariana Islands and Guam. To visit any of my articles on these U.S. territories, simply visit ProfessorSlots.com followed by its two-letter postal designation. For example, my American Samoa Slots article is available at ProfessorSlots.com slash AS. Without casinos, slot machines, or gaming commission, theoretical payout and return statistics are unavailable. In summary, Hawaii slot machine casino gambling does not exist. Alongside Utah, Hawaii is one of the most uncompromising states towards legalized gambling. Improve your slots performance in 30 days or less with a 30 days to play slots smarter and win. You also get three free valuable bonuses, including one month free to my slots IQ membership group, where you'll get community support and accountability. Visit professorslots.com 30 days to learn more about the free bonuses, course content, and testimonials from participants. Next up is the question and answer session from my initial rendition of today's topic from a prior live stream. I'll talk with you again afterward. Enjoy. So let's go over questions. Uh, on Tuesday, I didn't have a lot of questions and I should have understood that. I think we've got a, f a few of them today. So um, if uh, you don't have questions, I'm going to pull from my list of questions that I've gotten from emails and all over the place and, and, and share with you people's questions and my answers to them. So, hey, everybody. Um, hey, Margaret. Let me uh, make sure that uh, everybody can see the, uh, please use hashtag question when asking your questions so that I can be sure to um, uh, spot it amongst uh, all the back and forth between people. Um, and I, I'm seeing wonderful conversations uh, now uh, here. And so, uh, and Margaret, Margaret says, as I am listening, I am updating my gambling records. Uh, um, uh, Margaret has won a hand pay or two. Uh, I am especially proud of her um, uh, um, going to a casino in in Las Vegas, I don't mean to give away secrets here, but um, to go to a casino in Las Vegas that Brian Christopher um, was about to start his regularly scheduled show uh, and of playing, of recording, and, and you know, planned a week in advance, which the casino know, knew perfectly well. So uh, she got grabbed his machine 10 minutes before he showed up, got two hand pays, got off of it, and he did it. <laughs> and she's like, I think I took his hand pays, but I'm like, no, 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 it was, um, there's this myth out there that the casino, um, uh, you know, allows him to win. Uh, and that's, completely illegal. Uh, Brian Christopher has talked about it with others uh, that he was interviewing. That's completely illegal, right? But if you tell them where you, when you're going to be there and they put it into the schedule to have better odds on the machine that you told them that you would play and have been playing for like a year on a, on a Tuesday, <laughs> they can just set it high. 
with high odds. And I just love that Margaret would just kind of slipped in there 10 minutes before and, and got a couple of hand base. <laughs> awesome. I just, yeah, you guys are great. You guys are great. Um, right. So uh, um, Camilla says gambling winnings, not taxed in Canada, fortunately. Sure. Yep. 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 Uh, and, um, uh, uh, Canada is, uh, not as many kinds of comps, alcohol, more expensive. Uh, sure, sure, sure. Um, and Linda has a question. Are there, uh, multiple factors that could affect winnings? Not able to get hand pays like back at, at end of, uh, end of year, 2020 been playing when see multiple hand plays hitting, but, uh, just a small win so far. Uh, uh yeah i mean i i i'm it's it's i'm always kind of like debating with myself gee i wish winning at slots would be easy and then i put out a video and i'm like well they either listen or they don't i guess i'm done here you know <laughs> and 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 um you know so i fortunately for a business new stuff comes out uh, there's things like listening or and watching uh, which m machines are um, set in the right uh, uh, vis highly visible location. Some casinos love to do that. Others, you know, just you know don't want to do that. Uh, and um, all these different things that are in play. Uh, it's partly due to to the many different ways that um, uh, the many different ways that the state gaming regulations vary. And so that has driven a wide variety of options. Um, now, I suppose if every state had the same gaming regs, uh, that one loophole would work at all of them. And then I'd be able to make one video on YouTube and then I'd go off and do maybe do aerospace or something else because oh, that's it folks. Uh, but because it is so much variety, uh, so many different things being done by casinos because they can, uh, then I've got so many videos to make. I, I try to focus on the big picture, but you know, I'll put out a, a, a video about how to win at Washington's unique, truly unique class three machines based off the scratch ticket lottery system. You know, and and um, I'm I'm you know I've been putting together my knowledge base for for Oklahoma's Class Two machines or any state that has Class Two machines uh, to help people with these these bingo competition machines, uh, and I've been putting it together, putting it together, putting it together, and people are like, just tell us what you know, make it perfect later, and I'm like, okay, 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 so I'm working on getting that out for you. Um, and, but, you know, I try to keep it at a high level so that everybody is helped. Um, and then every once in a while I, I dive into historic horse racing in Kentucky and Arkansas, and now it's spreading through Wyoming and all the other States. So, uh, yes, there is multiple factors. Uh, it doesn't take a PhD, a PhD, um, me is, is trying to put this in a nice little package for you. Uh, and, um, uh, and that's a little bit by, uh, you know, what's going on when, uh, somebody was asking about, uh, well, there's multiple people with GEDs and high school diplomas, um, uh, or GEDs, uh, who say otherwise. And I'm just like, um, you know, no disrespect, but maybe they could read the gambling, reg the gambling regs. Um, uh, maybe they could listen to the people that they're interviewing and hear them say where it works. If you don't want to hear, um, not to use the analogy, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make the horse drink. Um, you know, uh, if you don't want to know, if you made up your mind beforehand, um, I, well, I don't disparage other channels. <laughs> and they can't make me. <laughs> um, so next questions. Uh, uh, okay. Tribal says, uh, love the shirt. Um, thank you. Uh, I, I, I wore its partner shirt. Am I going to have to get more Hawaiian shirts for the show? <laughs> Cause I'm telling you now during the winter in Ohio, I'm wearing flannel. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Brett says the five spin method is the reason for 95% of my jackpots. Yeah. I mean, the, at one casino I went to, that's all I did. 
And at the other casino, they didn't have it. And that's, I had to do the one week later, actually. And I've, I've, I've been talking about that elsewhere. And excuse me, just a moment. So when it works, it works. And then you just wait for them to get rid of it. But in the, in the meantime, just wear out that chair. <laughs> um, uh, AT says, you're the best uh, prof. Uh, keep it up. Thank you, AT. I appreciate it. Camilla says, uh, uh, um, this is where my uh, lack of a plan uh, made me lose after winning bit larger jackpots would waste them on penny machines. Um, yeah. Uh, and, uh, uh, but to go back to Camilla, um, as I talk about here, I've, I've been trying to, you know, focus on people's issues um, that, uh, uh, you know, first I helped you win. <laughs> and then you found out that it's hard to keep the winnings. <laughs> and so I'm like, okay, okay, okay. I, I'll work on how to leave a machine that's a losing machine, how to leave a casino with your money and how to preserve gains. So today's topic is if you increase your bankroll by significantly from 300 to 1,000, from 1,000 to 3,000, then your preserving gains technique may not scale to the higher level. If you use a lockable wallet, it, it's only so big. And it holds like, I think the one of the two holds like 50 bills, which is like $5,000. And, you know, $3,000 bankroll, you, you, know, you can barely fit $3,000 in it. What if you want a $10,000 bankroll? With $30,000, I've won $14,000 bankrolls, $27,000 bankrolls, $10,000 bankrolls, multiple $5,000 bankrolls, you know, and it's like, no, a lockable wallet, unless I've got, you know, keys rattling all over me, um, boxes on, uh, all over me, um, uh, you know, multi, like a fishing jacket with lots of pockets and all the, you no, know, no, uh, it, it, it becomes something that also has to be changed because you're bringing more money to the casino. Um, yeah, yeah. And, uh, is, uh, is this in any way applicable to online casino slots? Yes. Uh, if you, I don't have the link here. Uh, I don't like to put, uh, use links here. If you look for bank, the bonus, if you go to my website, uh, yes, should be able to do that. I'll show you. Um, if you go to my website and, um, I got a big button. Do you see a <laughs> big mouse? Do you see it? If you go under strategies, Click that. And there will be Tough Love, Washington, Friday Observations. And then what you're looking for is this one here called Bank the Bonus. Bank the Bonus, an online slots winning strategy. So you click that and you come to the article. And uh, there's a video on YouTube, uh, which you can just watch from there. But it's, you know, it's a bunch of numbers and, and letters. So I don't have that memorized for you, or you can just read it. Um, and what I, I need to put that into a podcast so I can put the podcast um, a link there too. Um, thank you for inspiring me to remember that. So that's, what, that's where you go for, for that, yes. Uh, um, let's see, <laughs> Kitty is happy today. Uh, Yep, there she is. Um, right there is Curie. Um, oh, can I can I show you this? Um, <laughs> and there's Isaac. <laughs> it's a warm day out, as as probably you might have seen with the um, uh, Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> so. I think he's just snored or snorted or something. Um, uh, yes, uh, Kiri uh, is uh, a, a associate producer, um, <laughs> and and um, uh, good to see you, uh, Sugar Moon Garden. And uh, so, a little bit off-topic question from Camilla. Let's see what it is. Uh, off-topic, but do you have any predictions? Uh, re how a possible economic downturn later this year may affect casinos. Um, uh, <sighs> casinos were badly affected by the pandemic two years ago 
And it was only a couple of months ago, maybe earlier this year, maybe that they got over it. It took like a year and a half. And even then they're just so, so nervous. So an academic downturn is not the same as all casinos closing suddenly for a month, for two months, for three months, where previously the, the casinos closed for one day on the funeral for President Kennedy in 1963. That's the other time when all casinos closed and it was for a day. So talk about unexpected. So relatively, and I've been doing this lately with some of the news with the um, uh, Ukraine and other stuff. Um, let's set priorities. Uh, the pandemic, uh, if everything shuts down, that would be the nightmare returned for casinos. Ec and ec economic downturn, if if that everything had closed situation had not happened and wasn't at all threatened by monkeypox or something. I don't know if I should use that word because YouTube algorithm checks all the words um, quickly and, and, and uh, might demonetize this video because of it. But, but um, if all casinos close, that's what they're worried about. Uh, if um, there is an economic downturn later this year, well, that's the second worst thing, but it isn't close to the first. And the first, you know, is new, uh, a couple of years old, but it's it, it, this economic downturns would be the worst thing ever if that other thing hadn't happened. Uh, so let's just calibrate here. So I'm getting all kinds of messages um, uh, right now on, on something. Uh, so, so with that perspective, uh, what would the economic downturn look like? Um, what the casinos did in the pandemic was not spend money. And it was only earlier this year, not even well, like April, that they started loosening the purse strings, not to build an additional building, but to, you know, fix the slot machines in their casinos. Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Horseshoe Indianapolis, formerly uh, Indiana Grand, 10% of their machines were broken, 150 out of, you know, 1,500. I counted. <laughs> and, and, and the work orders on them were like four months old on some of them. Maybe they repaired a few of them, but there were, still wasn't 10% fixed. And so uh, there's also a lot of wearing out that's taking place. So casinos four months ago decided, five months ago, decided, okay, 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 you can buy a few slot machines. You know, you've been begging us to release the funds. We made back what we lost during the pandemic again and again and again and again and again. And we're a little reassured now that our bank vault's full of money. But, but you know, so I guess maybe you can buy a few machines. Well, uh, but they've put up building stuff. Uh, additions that had been in the plans in the works. I have a few inside contacts who are just like, yeah, we were going to build stuff and now we can't because the state gaming regulations in Pennsylvania, for instance, allowed satellite buildings to be put near established casinos and none of that, none of that happened. Uh, uh, and, you know, you know, it's a moneymaker because it costs money to build it and, and, and all these, you know, it's just not a good time for that. Um, even if they would make money because they can't get it done in any cheap manner. So I don't mean to go on about this, but the economic downturn that may come would prevent them from getting those buildings again. And some of those buildings need to be replaced. Also any new machines that they're going to get that would stop. And that's not a good thing when so many machines are still worn out. Uh, you know, a few of them got replaced, but you need to replace them for like a year or more. Um, so yeah, uh, um, that's going to be that's going to be where the sticking point is uh, in an economic downturn, where everything starts getting broken more and more. You have to cannibalize, cannibalize some of the slot machines to keep the others going, uh, and then just put work order signs on them because they don't have storage spaces in casinos because naturally they would make that a smoking parlor or something so they could get running machines and make $70,000 uh, per machine per month 
uh, on average in, uh, after returning 90% of what they made on that machine. Uh, so these are all gaming statistic numbers, um, mostly for in Indiana. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think that it's, um, if the economic downturn, it depends on how long it lasts. Not to go too far on this, but it depends on how long it lasts. Uh, how long will machines hold out when people are hitting the buttons so hard? Uh, AT, uh, in Virginia, uh, are the queen of VA skill games, same as the queen of PA, uh, set to a central server for odds or individually programmed? Um, are you talking about uh, Rosie's? Uh, because those are historic horse racing games. And uh, so those aren't skill-based games. Uh, well, they sort of are. It's not bingo. It's horse races. And on the horse was a jockey once upon a time, a hundred years ago in Europe, because you can use the records way back because it's the same gaming regulations for the horse race. Uh, so it might've been in Australia. It might've been anywhere. They can use those records uh, for, you know, things from the 1800s uh, for these games to plug in those numbers. And so the skill was in the jockey. The skill isn't in the player. So, you know, when people start talking about skill-based games, it's kind of important to understand where that comes from. Uh, so uh, on historic horse racing, yeah, that's a central server. Uh, and um, because it's not uh, prevented. And so it's just easier for the casino to to run all of them that way, um, reduce workforce, faster uh, financial performance metrics, all that. So they just naturally do it. And so, um, but if you're talking about, um, um, I, I, if you're talking about like truck stops, um, um, push machines, push games point pushers, uh, other stuff like that. Um, convenience stores don't have central servers. Uh, you need to have, I don't know, 25, 50 machines in order to even make it profitable. Uh, and 5,000 is better, 15, you know, 1,000 is better uh, for that sort of thing because it, it scales and it costs. And um, uh, these semi-illegal, gray legal area, maybe, maybe it's legal in some states. Uh, it's a whole thing going to these convenience stores. So find out which machines there are there and, and email me at john at professorslots.com. Give me the name of the facility or, or some information. I can tell you what kind of slot machines they have because uh, there's getting to be a couple of variations and you need to know what kind of game it is to, in order to know um, which, uh, which slot, which group of slot strategies I have that would work on it. Uh, I hope that helps. Serenista, uh, I would, uh, you, Serena C, sorry, you, you, you spelled it out for me. You, you, you spelled it phonetically for me one time, and I just have to remember that. Uh, uh, Serena C, uh, kind of a question. I would be interested in hearing the range of one word answers to your most uh, recent survey, uh, casino visits, um, to recent survey, um, oh, year to date, uh, casino visits year to date. Um, uh, so uh, <laughs> um, let me see if I can plot that out for you. Uh, oh, um, I don't have that data. It's raw data. Also, um, I have a concerned about privacy um, and, and sharing uh, that data. I wish that more casinos would share their data, but they're all very closed lipped. Um, and I, I, um, it's a privacy uh, thing for my audience members. I want to reassure them that, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's not about, you know, selling their data or anything like that. Um, uh, I could, but, um, you know, it, I, all I'm saying is valuable. I would like to um, collect a few more survey responses and then see what it says. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I ask that question regularly, but I'm not. Um, it's hard. Uh, I don't know if you've done surveys before, but they're difficult <laughs> because you, you, when, when you, 
give people like a written a possibility to do a written answer, they will say a lot of different stuff. Oh, three. And I'm like, three times a week, three times a month, three times a year, three times in your life. I don't know. <laughs> and so, so I've been giving multiple choice answers uh, to try to better understand um, what they do. But then some people are like, no, that's not, it's none of those. And I'm like, oh, sorry, I wonder which one it was. So uh, surveys can be interesting. They're um, incredibly valuable. And I, uh, uh, that sort of thing would be helpful uh, uh, for me to understand. Uh, and I will share what seems appropriate uh, to you guys. Yeah. Uh, and casino executives can, can just like uh, make me an offer. <laughs> um, so Richard asks a question. Have you tried the five spin method? Have you? Okay. Um, your sentence structure is a little off. Uh, five spin method, same machine, five spins per separate denomination on a single multi-denomination machines. Okay, I think I know what you're asking. You're asking if I did the five, myth, five spin method by on a multi-denomination machine, I picked one of the denominations and then I stopped. And then I did it again, but only did a different denomination and then a different denomination and then a different denomination. No, I haven't. Uh, partly because I have a $300 bankroll and I go and make minimum bets on the minimum denomination. And so if I win something with a five cent win, then it might be a $3 bet versus all my other 60, 60 cent bets. And then it becomes skewed. Like, did I, did I do well overall at that casino with the five spin method? Or did I just have a lucky hit once? And so I try to make sure I don't change things up by changing denominations or credits bet. Otherwise, my taking $300 to this casino, that casino, that casino, that casino, playing penny machines for minimum bets at this casino, this casino, this casino, that casino, it all becomes kind of like I can't compare the different casinos and see which one's better. Uh, I should make a separate trip to do that, or, or you can. Um, find a casino where the five spin method works, is currently working, pick a multi-denomination machine, try it. Only costs you up to five bets. <laughs> uh, AT says, um, I see an ethernet cable, but it's possible that goes to the payout kiosk. I'm trying to remember. Oh, I, uh, I, uh, we don't know where the cable goes. Um, and, uh, and you have a payout kiosk that, that sounds, that sounds like a convenience store setup. Uh, so it, it, um, if it is, uh, let's, I'll just go by, does it have five or 10 machines, less than 10 machines, then it's, 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 there's no way they can afford a central server, no way they even want it. Uh, there's other options like controlled by the uh, the lottery, but when you said payout kiosk, that's an arrangement that some convenience stores do in order to not have anything to do with the machines that have been installed. Uh, they just um, get what they get their percentage, and it's hands off for the night clerk who's got a third job and is half asleep. Yeah. Uh, Sugar Moon Garden. I'm so I'm. Yeah, I, 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 I'm working on it. <laughs> I'm working on it. There's a lot to do. There's a lot to do. Uh, and I've committed to having it done in um, about a month uh, by the end of August uh, and uh, or the end of August. So just around a month, I've committed to having that, uh, that part done. Uh, and uh, we'll keep on working on it. Okay, so more Hawaiian shirts. Thank you, T-Ball. <laughs> um, uh, um, Sugar Moon Garden says, Every, anytime I've w ever won large jackpots, I've always took like a th quarter of it in cash and the rest in a check. That works. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You can take, uh, you can do that. Yeah, animals conserving their energy, Camilla says, yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, there's a reason why I had 
uh, my, my, some of my cats were co-hosts because they would just like lie on the table, <laughs> kind of yawn. <laughs> Um, yeah, Clint, I heard about uh, a station casinos closing and not reopening in Henderson. I'd heard about that, yeah. But that 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 wasn't, you know, that decision was made, I think that was at least a month ago. So it wasn't, um, they just, it's really hard for casinos. They're scared to death of being closed a month, two months, three months. Uh, and they were like, ah, you know, it, it, it's, it's, uh, they were so kind of like um, living on the edge. You might think they made money and they do, but the investors wanted that money. And so uh, having cash for operating expenses, um, you know, and then the, and the not even knowing when they would reopen. Um, and so, yes, uh, some casinos have closed in the, in the world, in the country. Um, there was a uh, American, gaming association had a app where they would update about in the country and they would say which one was commercial and which one was tribal they would say which casinos are open and which machine which casinos are closed and when they reopened on the pandemic and i had live streams two years ago uh when all that was going on and i would i would share that um yeah, right about two years from now, end of July, uh, I would share that app on on the screen here and in my old live streams. And I would say, you know, out of the thousand casinos, half of them being tribal casinos, only these are open and all these gray uh, icons across the US, United States um, uh, are, the, are the closed casinos and some of them never reopened. So plenty of casinos have closed then. Uh, and uh, the rest are, are struggling. Now, Henderson, Las Vegas, this is a whole economy um, uh, based on um, one industry. And I'm from, myself, a town that is based on one industry, worse, one manufacturer, uh, Flint, Michigan, remember the water crisis? Well, anyway, 30 years before before that, uh, uh, General Motors w um, was the one company. They had like 80. There was a movie on it, Roger and Me, um, I think it was. Um, anyway, uh, Michael Moore. And, and um, uh, all that was, uh, uh, you know, the... the, the um, situation the they there was that industry is like washington is like vegas in that it has one industry you know hershey pennsylvania is chocolate multiple chocolate companies uh and so las vegas is based on gambling and they've been working very hard they started what 1935 1934 at least that's when the first slot machines went in and what else matters <laughs> but um uh in a desert and they have been trying to switch over to tourism, they've been trying to switch over to to um, uh, conferences, uh, and with limited success relative to casinos. Uh, and with more and more casinos, first it was Atlantic City opening into the east, so everybody didn't have to fly all the way to Las Vegas from the east coast. Then it's just everywhere: riverboat casinos up and down the east coast. A um, bunch of ca uh, uh, casinos, tribal casinos in California with the IGRA federal law enacted in 1988 by Ronald Reagan uh, pre as president signing it. Uh, and Las Vegas is like a failed idea. But like General Motors in Flint, Michigan, they can close 30 factories and they still got 58 left. Uh, and they can close another 20 and it's still, you know, so many more. So it's just a failed concept but they are invested in it. Um, there's plenty of people who work in Las Vegas in the gaming industry, bartenders um, at a restaurant in the forum shops, Caesars forum shops. They can't work anywhere else. They can't go anywhere else in the country and make as much money as the visitors just tip them. Like seriously, you know, it, it, it's, a lot of money and so um it's it's all these people are invested in it and um it's kind of 
Well, we are talking about economic conditions here, aren't we? It's, it seems to be the theme of the show. Uh, Jason says, do you, uh, do you see that tribal casinos pay out less than others? I go to Biloxi once a month and seem to do good, but there is a tribal casino closer to my home that never seems to hit as often. Um, I have seen return statistics from some uh, tribal casinos, uh, and they're just as, just as the same as commercial. Um, what's more important is whether or not a casino is isolated. So if you, you go to, um, uh, I'll share this with you. If you go to my website, professorslots.com, and you go all the way to the bottom, right here, as featured on ABC 27 News, is a, um, maybe a, uh, I, I can't show it because there's commercials and YouTube doesn't like to compete for, for commercials, but this is a eight-minute report, investigative report, um, uh, or you can just go to professorslots.com slash ABC27 uh, or hit that link. But it's an interview of me uh, by uh, ABC Channel 27, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, evening news, 11 o'clock news. Uh, and they interviewed me for like four hours, but they just put one of my jokes in about buffets, how much I'd, I'd shave a percentage point off of uh, my return for a good buffet. <laughs> um, so uh, they thought that was funny. And so they used that, but I told them mostly what they needed to know. Uh, they, they actually had done a previous, a little bit of previous work <clears throat> on, on understanding Pennsylvania's returns. Uh, and basically is if your casino near you is isolated, that's all there is to it. If it's commercial casino, tribal casino, doesn't matter. That casino is fully aware, excuse me, is fully aware that you need to drive a long way to go to any other place with a casino. That's it. They have no nearby casinos, so they take advantage of you by lowering the odds because they can. And they can do that in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, with a local Penn National, as that report is about. But as you'll just listen to the last few seconds of the anchors talking to each other in that um, eight-minute segment, uh, and they will talk about, well, why isn't that the case up in Pennsylvania? Because they showed some statistics, not Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, it's which is well north. Uh, why isn't that happening at the uh, Philadelphia casinos? They have competitors. They're, they're not very far from one another. And they have, you know, hey, I don't like what's going on here. I'm going to go to the next casino over. And that makes all the difference in the world. So it's not really a commercial and tribal thing. It's more of a, you know, you're hard rock Tampa. Uh, and by golly, uh, you know, you got to drive 300 miles to get any to any other casino. And they know that. Um, yeah. So if uh, to... Uh, answer a few questions here uh we are well um do we have a uh, we have a question good um clarification would the same central server in a casino be the same one as the guests in the, in the same building um okay so we're talking like really small and uh it's kind of a toss-up when you have a casino with an attached building, uh, which is really small. It does happen. Casinos, right? It's it's a term. Uh, and some of them are class three machines. See, class two machines don't need it. Well, they sort of need it. They, they It's a different central server. Uh, um, class two machines, bingo machines, are often running the same bingo game. And that game is run on multiple machines by having a central connection, a central server. But then the class three machines uh, have a central server to adjust the odds on a schedule so that you don't have to have as many people uh, slot uh, text changing things. Uh, they, they are less used that way and more automated and it's just what you do, but you have to pay for that machine. So, you know, the basic rule that I go by is, does it have altogether 40 machines? Um, you know, if it's a huge casino, then they, they'll have it there. Uh, do they run a cable out to the, the casino? I don't know. <laughs> they could, they could. Uh, but um, you know, it's, it's, uh, 
yeah, there's always, you always want to go deeper into these things, don't you? That's, that's, I admire that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, John, is it 45 or is it 40 uh, slot machines? And I'm like, uh, you know, I haven't it's always, is it five spin method or is it six spin method or is it four spin method? And I'm like, huh? <laughs> and so I, so there's, there's always more minutia, uh, which I think is just great. Um, I wish I knew. Uh, and it sounds like, uh, Maybe you can ask um, or something. Uh, check to see if the casino, the gas casino, has class two machines. In which case, it would not really matter if they did um, uh, uh, have a central server for those, because it would not be the central server you want them to have. If that makes sense, yeah. Uh, right. So. Uh, improve your slots play for um, your slots performance in 30 days or less with my uh, uh, online course, uh, 30 days to play slots smarter and win. Uh, you also get three free valuable bonuses, including one month free to my slots IQ membership. We have our meeting tonight already. Uh, looking forward to it. Um, and you'll get uh, there. You'll get community support and accountability. Visit professorslots.com slash 30 days to learn more about the free bonuses, course content, um, bonuses, uh, t testimonials, 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 Ah, course content. Uh, here's the section of course content. And then the bonuses are there uh, and et cetera. So, um, uh, uh, but to see, uh, um, but if you're still on the fence about whether to buy the course, the price of the course is increasing this weekend. It will soon no longer be 40% off for an $80 savings at midnight Eastern on Sunday, July 31st. As you can see from this countdown clock, three hours, three days, eight hours, 48 minutes, 56 seconds. Um, and once you have purchased the course, you have lifetime access uh, and all further uh, uh, increases in price, and there will be them, uh, will not matter to you. So if you don't have the course, don't wait to do it later. Time is running out. Okay, that is it. Um, <laughs> what a great live stream. Uh, you can see me in my next live stream on Saturday at noon Eastern. Next, I highly recommend this video on what's better than my five spin method. Bye. Improve your slots performance in 30 days or less with my 30 days to play slots smarter and win. You also get three free valuable bonuses, including one month free to my Slots IQ membership group, where you get community support and accountability. Visit professorslots.com slash 30 days to learn more about the free bonuses, course content, and testimonials from participants. The next episode of the Professor Slots podcast will include another slots related topic, a review of the slots industry in Idaho, and a past live stream Q&A session. That's the end of another great episode of the Professor Slots podcast. Thanks so much for listening. I plan to have the next episode come out very soon for you where I'll have more amazing content for the show. Until the next episode, have fun, be safe, and make good choices. Bye.